Uh, I will talk about the application, primarily application of scanning electron microscopy uh, as a petrographic technique. Uh, I will go through, you know, the not spend much time on the principles and how it works, but more focused on the case studies and application. Uh, so basically, scanning electron microscope is actually uh, the scan, uh, you know, an electron beam scan the surface of the specimen line by line and generated the signal and detector catch those signals and talk about uh, topology the surface as well as the composition of the mineral phase or whatever phase that has been sample. So it is basically the interaction of the electron beam and the specimen to create signal and signal picked up by the detector. Before going to SEM, we need to compare the scanning uh, light optical microscope and uh, scanning electron microscope. In the optical microscope, the source is light and it goes through, passes through the sample, it is a thin section and goes through the objective lens and then image and you directly see with your eye on the microscope. And or you can project on the, on the computer screen to see camera. But in scanning electron microscope, the source is the electron beam, which is, is a, you know, there is a cathode source, anode source, and then the electron moves through the magnetic condenser lens, and then specimen, magnetic objective lens, intermediate lens, is here the image, and going through the magnetic projection lens, and ultimately you see a gray, different gray level, black and white images. It's an indirect way. So basically, this is the main difference between optical microscope and this is the how the scanning electron microscope looks like. And you see the, the motorized stage, you just take it out and do a very tiny sample and put it there and but it you need to wait for a very high vacuum is necessary for the observation. So it, the sample goes to a tremendous amount of vacuum. And that sometimes creates some artifacts also. You can identify as a shrinkage that are exactly the artifacts, the specimen that undergoes the condition. So, we basically, you know, the electron beam interacts with the specimen and we picked up the key important aspect. One is the secondary electron, another one is the backscattered electron, another one is the characteristic air space. And if you go to the next one, you see the secondary electron is a very tough, very tough color of material. That's the secondary electron. It gives a fantastic image of the surface topology, but it, you know, energy is low, low power. But the back scatter moves a little bit deeper into the specimen, up to say, uh, in the y axis it is mentioned, and then if you go below, it will be the characteristic excess. So how do we change that? Changing the accelerating voltage. If we increase the accelerating voltage, the depth of penetration increases and it gives different kind of information. So basically, uh, secondary electron image and the back scatter electron image. So secondary electron image, you know, set, uh, AC are low energy electrons. It's only those produced near the surface escape and produce images of surface topography. It is very useful to do the side shape, surface roughness and is a fractured surface. Tiny, you know, you take a piece of concrete or paste or mortar and maybe half inch uh, kind of square, half inch dimension, very tiny sample, but you got a very valuable image. You need to remember that very tiny and tiny size of the specimen. That scattered electron, of course, is a high energy beam electron, scattered. It needs flat and polished. So that's very important. You need to have a lot of sample preparation efforts. So epoxy impregnated of any powder material or any solid material. It feels the pores. It you know it in different stages of grinding and polishing. It is still flat polished surface. This is highly needed for getting a better results in that scatter. So what it does? It distinguishes the phase, different phase in your sample depending on the Z diameter or atomic number. The higher the atomic number, it looks more brighter. 
So see, see that example, Ferrari in a cement printer, 17.1 was very bright. On the other hand, etching guide and thermal site or monosulfate is kind of darker. That's, that's the way that's the works. So it gives a Buddhist monitoring identification of the product phase there in the cement. And voids, of course, dark, very dark voids. Now you see the sample preparation, the importance of the sample preparation. The left off is just the cut surface. Just the cut surface and you don't see anything. So if you use a cut surface without timing and polishing, you don't get anything in that set. Now, the right one, right off, a little bit polishing. The below one, more polishing, like 0.6 or 5, 6 micron diamond test. And the, the left below is the perfect polishing. You see a lot of impositions are not available. You can identify those best present in the specimen. So I already told that sample dimension is really tiny. It gets a scanner electron. And of course, the one requirement is that sample needs to be dried. Sample needs to be put in the again evaluation and then needs to be coated with a conductive material like a gold or gold or again in case of secondary electron images and carbon coating in case of gas that composition of information is important. Now you see here beautiful image of the one day cement test. This is secondary electron. Very tiny little specimen you will need, uh, you know any sample preparation, you are getting a three-dimensional like perfect crystal as hexagonal and the perfect crystal of needle shape line. Now seven days, seven days you have started losing the line. In seven days you see the blocky uh, calcium hydroxide, not a perfect crystal of calcium hydroxide, etching that crystal shape, a lot of pores are black and CSH are now forming. So it started. So this is a good information, but you need to know when to use the secondary electron Now backscatter. See the one day doesn't give much information. So early stage cement test uh, scanning. I mean secondary electron images are very useful. But see the six months with the backscattered electron. It's very nice. You see that all the high reflective are ferrite. I mean some of them are unhydrated cement particles. The cap CSA here are forming nicely in the denser microstructure. It looks better. Now you can do a lot of quantification. Quantification is only possible with gas image. And magnification in, in scanning electron microscope, you can go up to 50 to 50,000. So it's very high and high feature you can get it. And the resolution is it is a new all the time of our resolution. Optical microscope, we get around 0.2 micron. In secondary electron, SEM image, you get 10 nanometer. But that scattered, of course, the resolution mass scattered electron is pretty poor. But the contrast is extremely good. So you know how to use those different options. And we know X ray, you know, when electron, you know, is uh, interact with the specimen. In the specimen, atoms, electrons, they interact. And if we move the inside cell electron from the outside cell, high energy, low energy, and if any sense specific X rays, which is the characteristic of structural elements, that's why X ray analysis is important. It gives the chemical element of concentration, presence, and quantification. And you see, this is the, uh, the mapping that we generally do. If you do the mapping, um, uh, you know, uh, different element mapping, and then identify the phase present in your sample. This is very common techniques, and of course, image analysis is very important. Computer gives a huge benefit that you don't have to do anything manual. So, all those specimens size in ACM is smaller, but you get several images and then process to computer. It gives a very representative and overcome the drawback of that smaller size ACM. And so, advantage of course, uh, advantage of ACM high resolution image, sufficient contrast. Image processing and analysis do a lot of quantification, quantitative clinical analysis. These are the all advantage of SEM and phase identification, ports and connectivity. Because you know we do a lot of nanotechnology, a lot of uh, fine particles we add. 
how it modifies the microstructure of the concrete, uh, connectivity for transport property and then connect with the all the property that we need for registrability for liability. So it's a really and also concrete durability aspect. And I have some uh, features to show you to, to, to basically highlight some of the some of the importance, some of the application. Before going there, we all the time it is a combined approach. SEM doesn't give all the answer alone. You need to apply that optical microscope. Three inch by two inch three section, observe it and get all the features and specify where you need more specific information to go to scanning electron microscope and sometimes it's a different. So it is in a petrographic observation ASTM C thought about it. That use optical microscope and judicious gives scanning electron microscope SRP to give the complete picture. So it is a comprehensive approach, not a single technique, give all the answer. And you see this is the section I observe. Under microscope, I love the thin section, and it is two inch by three inch concrete specimen. And so, see, this is a now I go to our case studies. You see, this is a filter microscope, optical microscope, polished section, reflected light, gives beautiful information. You really don't need to scan the microscope immediately. Do this and see the light size, morphology, the light, and the matrix, actually, right, the left side. The darker portion in the matrix is, is, is aluminum and the brighter is ferrite. And then do the point counting, do all the quantification. I personally did once on the time. So this is really good optical microscope. Then I go very specifically to the microscope. Top two images are secondary components. You can see the morphology of the rounded light and the light in the, in, the, in the top right. So in the morphological information, if it is useful, but the bottom one, at my opinion, reactive daylight cement is sustainable cement. You produce a uh, low quality limestone, make cement where the daylight is the dominant phase. Daylight alpha phase needs to be stabilized in order to uh, meet the early stage requirements. So you see here the lamellar structure. The lamellar structure and the which polymer in your sample, there is a good correlation. So, scanning electron microscope PAC image can help you. Understand, of course, actually, this is also needed. Which polymorph of the light stabilizing your sample? So, this is a good quality of the tool. This is the personally we did. Uh, you know, the left one is the optical microscope and time count. Very realistic, it takes a lot of time. One person needs four days time to do one sample. So, what we did is back scatter the electron image and then image analysis. And you see the results are very comparable. So, image analysis is very quick, save time. Not very and compared to point counting and cube extracting, it's very acceptable. So that's one application. And then you see this is optical microscope again. Interfacial transition zones. You see here the right side 0.5 percent is It's a beautiful crystal of calcium hydroxide around the primary. This is the indication of high percent without any other kind of bias. And the left side is ultra fine flyers. I think it's a 25%. Those beautiful crystals of calcium hydroxide is gone. And some of the some of the fine aggregate there is absolutely no calcium hydroxide. So see the calcium hydroxide nature of distribution from optical microscopy. You are getting beautiful observation and area of the sample is good, but then go to the SEM to know it better. Now you see here, this is the IPZ. Perfect crystal gas and hydroxide aligned, and then from this side in the left side, and you move away, you know, your velocity is high. This is the typical example of IPC in secondary electronics. You don't get much quantifiable information, but you can see the morphology of the crystal. Now, this is also again secondary electronics. You see the ultra fine particles are in the second zone, where velocity and you know that's the purpose of fine particles. So this is manifested in this example. Now this is the gas scatter. You can quantify it. This is not my work, this is Paul's work. So um, see the left side, not the gray level is not optimized. The right side in his gray, gray, gray level side is, is optimized. And you see the ITZ, left side is a fine aggregate. The all the black are are voids. So the ITZ, there are a lot more. And you go away from the IPC, 
you see the distribution of unhydrated cement particles are bright particles and then all the CSH and everything. So you can characterize the IPC by adding a lot of these technology global material like nanotechnology, limestone powder, after time flyers. This is a great technique to understand. Of course, you are measuring property, you are measuring legitimacy, protection, transport property. But this is a great supporting tool to justify the mechanism and, and how this input is important to understand. Flyers, beautiful particles of flyers, right? And then we know what are the QFs that you also talk about, what are the quantification. We have different techniques, multiple techniques we use. But if you just one person of hydrochloric acid to remove the outer skin, very part of the crystal inside the individual spherical particles. So don't think that all the spherical particles and everything is here. Only the outer shell is amorphous. Inside the crystal it does here. What doesn't react? Light water perfect in solid image. See the beautiful information is coming to characterize the flyers. Now, ozonization, you see the left, right, it has some hydrocyclistas and those uh, flyer particles and new CSA is forming. And those CSA, you know, the calcium acidic ratio is low, the absorbed alkaline binding capacity is good, those are all benefits we are getting to understand that is a game This is a direct evidence. Low temperature, high temperature. High temperature is very nice microstructure, the is very nice reacting, and then the lower one is, uh, and the, these are all, this is the uh, lower one is low, uh, normal temperature, so the pores are still there. We see ASR back in optical microscope, but if we go scanning electron, uh, this is another optical microscope, so optical microscope is giving nice information, but I know the composition of ASR gel, whether it's an ASR gel, or related thing, the microscope, I don't know at this time, so we give ASR gel, uh, how it looks like, and related gas. This is and it gives a clear indication that it's a here. Similarly, optical microscope is talking about this related to that formation. I have the expert in mind of the related to that, but I am So we did scan electron microscope. See the beautiful star that you like, how on the activated test, and this is confirmed that this is GDF. And this is another example. This is our square new organic big tag, and we have standard to me. This is the heating, tremendous heating gases. And this is basically a genetic formation. So these are a couple of examples just to talk about the capability of the combined effect of photographic techniques and standard from microscope. It's a beautiful tool, but however, an expert is needed to interpret better. Not everybody can do it. And thank you very much.